this is perfusion and cardiovascular dysfunction part two. So the way we like to classify heart defects is by the hemodynamics of it. Where is the blood going to flow? And we have four different uh, categories. Increased pulmonary blood flow, sending extra to the lungs. Decreased pulmonary blood flow, not sending it to the lungs. Obstruction, uh, or sometimes people will say an outflow obstruction. So blood has trouble getting out of the heart or mixed blood flow. So it's mixing inside the heart. Uh, down at the bottom here, this website is a great site that shows you the abnormals and you can scroll over them and it shows you what normal should be, what the abnormal is. So it's a really nice site, uh, pted.org. It's made by Johns Hopkins University and Cove Point. So we're going to start with decreased pulmonary blood flow. So this is things that do not send as much blood as they should to the lungs. And I'm just going to point out, see how those both start with a T? Tetralogy of Fallot and Tricuspid Atresia. Anything you see that starts with a T is bad. Our really bad defects are right to left shunts. I'll, I'll start with a T other than hypoplastic um, left ventricle. So this is going to give us less blood flow to the lungs because blood returning from the body to the right side of the heart shunts over to the left side of the heart and returns to the body. So we're taking deoxygenated blood, sending it back to the body. You're going to see low oxygen saturations. Giving oxygen into the lungs, into the respiratory system, does nothing because the blood's not going through the lungs. So our two defects that fall into this is tetralogy of Fallot. Tetra means four. So this is uh, four defects occur together. The first one is this ventricular septal defect. So the wall between the right and the left ventricles has a big hole. And the aorta, instead of being above the left ventricle where it should be, it's right smack over the septum, so an overriding aorta. And the pulmonary valve is stenose. That means it's really tight. So blood, whether it's returning, um, from the right side or into the left side of the heart, it's hard to go up that pulmonary valve. So it comes across and goes up the aorta. So we're mixing both our desaturated and saturated blood. So we're going to see low sats on this. Then um, right ventricular hypertrophy develops because that poor right ventricle is having to work so hard to send any blood up this pulmonary artery. So those are the four defects of that. This is a very repairable defect as long as there's nothing else going on with it and as long as it's done fairly early. Um, if you wait until those that hypertrophy and the pulmonary pressures really get bad, um, then we it's not as easy to repair. Tricuspid atresia. Um, if you remember the word atresia, this means not there, totally non-functional. Our tricuspid valve is our right AV valve. So we have no connection between the right atria and the right ventricle. So all the blood from the body that comes back into the right atria, it has to go across. It's going to make a big AS, um, atrial septal defect here. So it has to go across from the right atria to the left atria down to the left ventricle. And then some blood will go up the aorta, some will cross through a ventricular septal defect. Again, you can't develop in utero without the ASD and the VSD. And then um, that's the only blood that goes to the lungs. So this is actually a really bad defect because that right ventricle really has never gotten used. It's never getting filled with blood. It doesn't really develop and it's not really usable ever. So this takes several surgeries and we end up with a functioning heart, but it is never going to be a normal heart. So moving on to increased pulmonary blood flow, right? Those were decreased. So now we're sending too much blood to our lungs. Um, atrial septal defect, ventricular septal defect, AV canal defect, and that can have different names. So um, what I'm seeing them call it anymore is an a communicating ASD VSD um, and then patent ductus arteriosus. So those are our four uh, 
defects. So these all have some kind of abnormal connection between the two sides of the heart. Uh, the first three, it all happens inside the heart. Uh, the PDA, it happens with the great vessels. So we're getting increased blood volume sent to the lungs, to the right side of the heart, to the lungs, um, which means more blood flow to the lungs. It also means less blood flow out to the body, right? We're sending it somewhere else instead. So ASD is our first one. So we have an opening in the septum between the right and left atria. So after birth, a baby starts breathing, the pressures immediately start changing. Within a few hours of birth, we no longer have the, the higher pressure on the right side. We now have it on the left side. Um, that first breath starts this dramatic change of opening up all the alveoli and dropping the pressure in the lungs, the, the pulmonary pressures. Um, so within a couple hours after birth, higher pressure here, blood is only going to go from high to low pressure, right? So in utero, it was going right to left. Now it starts going left to right. So blood that's returning from the lungs into the left side of the heart moves, some of it moves across back to the right atrium, back to the lungs, returns to the right side of, sorry, to the left side of the heart, crosses back over to the right side. So what we're essentially doing is sending extra blood, blood from the lungs and sending it back. Um, you're going to see respiratory symptoms with that. We are flooding the lungs is what happens. VSD, this is ventricular septal defects. So we have a hole in the, the septum between the right and left ventricles. Again, within a couple hours of birth, the pressures are higher on the left. So this blood is going to shunt from high to low pressure. So from left side to right side. So blood that's returning from the lungs to the left side of the heart, a lot of it goes up the aorta, but some of it is going to go across to the right ventricle and then back to the lungs where it just came from. Too much blood flow to the lungs, this is going to give you respiratory symptoms. Um, an AV canal, atrioventricular canal, um, older literature, it may call it the pericardial cushion, a cushion um, defect. This is an ASD, so opening between the two atria and a VSD, opening between the ventricles that communicate with each other. So basically all four chambers can connect, right? And if you look, if you think about it, your AV valves are here and here, and then your pulmonary and aortic valve are here. They're in a straight line across the middle of the chest or the middle of the heart. So this is a problem right in here that goes up into the atria and down into the ventricle. So all four chambers are not separated. The very center of the heart lets all four chambers interact with each other or blood mixing. Again, because the pressure is higher on the left, blood's going to move from left to right. It's not going to move from right to left. Um, and some of it that's already come from the lungs is going to go back to the lungs. We're going to see respiratory symptoms from flooding our lungs. This defect, this um, is actually the most common defect we see with kids with trisomy 21, Down syndrome. Just a plain VSD, the ventricular septal defect, that's the most common defect in general. Uh, this is the most common one with Down syndrome, and it's actually quite common with Down syndrome. Uh, if all the, the flaps to the valves, the leaflets of the valves, if they're all there, it's not that hard of a defect to correct, and you get a perfectly functioning four-chamber heart. If we have valve issues, right, because this happens along that um, plane where the valves are, uh, then it can be a really bad defect and hard to repair. So it just depends on the, the valves. Patent ductus arteriosus. If you remember in utero, we've got this connection between right the pulmonary artery and the aorta. In utero, it's to let blood go from the, skip the lungs, go from the pulmonary artery to the aorta. Within a few hours of birth, the pressures have changed. So now we're going to send blood from the aorta 
back to the pulmonary artery. This happens very frequently in our preterm babies because they don't drop their pulmonary vascular resistance because they don't start breathing well at birth. Um, this should functionally close within hours to days of birth and then it structurally closes where it cannot be reopened within a few weeks. Um, this is super simple to repair actually. There are several ways to repair it. Sometimes they actually go in, make a surgical incision and it's usually kind of on the, the lateral but a little bit posterior and they go in and put a little clip over it. Just pinch it off. can also be um, li totally ligated so cut, cauterized or they can do a, a um, cardiac catheter and put something in there to block it. So moving on to our obstructive defects. So this obstructs uh, blood flow. So we've got coarctation of the aorta, aortic stenosis, and pulmonary stenosis. Coarctation means a really narrow place in a vessel. Stenosis means a really narrow place at a valve. So these are all areas where it's narrowed. Um, so narrowing of a vessel or a valve. Remember the blood's going to come and hit that place that's hard to get through because it suddenly got narrow. So you're going to see increasing pressure and the little bit that squirts through comes squirting through at high pressure but then it gets this wide open vessel and only a little bit of blood so you can see a big drop in pressure beyond the narrowed place because we have small volume in a big area now. Um, okay, So coarctation of the aorta usually happens right around here. This was our, our ductus arteriosus. It usually happens about here. But look here. This is where the subclavians and carotid come off. So the blood from the left ventricle comes up here, finds it hard to go down the aorta, and easy to go up to the head and the lungs. So what you're going to see is high blood pressure in the arms low blood pressure in the legs, right? Because very little got through this and then it turned from a straw to the garden hose. So now we've got very little blood in a big vessel. So um, high pressure in the arms, low pressure in the legs. And your kidney is the organ that really manages blood pressure, right? And the kidney's down there where it's saying, I'm not getting enough pressure. Raise it, raise it, raise it. So, um, that's our concern is raising this to the point that a stroke happens, um, right? CVA. Aortic stenosis. I said stenosis means it's at a valve, aortic, so it's at the aortic valve. So it's hard for blood to get out from the left ventricle. It's got to work really hard to get through the skinny place and then um, it gets back to normal size, which means you're gonna, you've got all this blood returning. It's going to build up in here, trying to get through there. So you're going to see higher pressures down here. That's a left ventricle. Pulmonary stenosis, same thing. We've got a really narrowed place at the pulmonary valve. So blood returning from the body gets here and into that right ventricle and it it's so hard to get out. This poor right ventricle's got to work so hard. You can get really high pressures here. Now, stenosed um, uh, valves, it just depends on where it's at. Sometimes we can thread through that catheter doing a, a cardiac catheterization, have a little balloon on the end that we blow up and stretch it out, and it opens it up. Um, other times, the valve is just not very functional. So it, it depends how much of the valve is bad, where in the valve it's bad. Sometimes these are quite minor. Sometimes they need a valve replacement. Um, usually we can postpone valve replacements um, till the child's grown a bit by doing that, you know, stretching it out. And then mixed defects. We'll stop here.